this evening what we'd like to do is encourage everybody in the things of the Lord. Now, we're sort of catching up on a lot of things that we got behind on, but again, it's always a joy to preach the gospel on Sunday morning when there are unsaved people in uh, uh, the service. Now, if you have your, I'm sure you have your Bible, turn to Luke chapter 1. Now, our purpose this morning or this evening is to encourage you in the things of God. You say, Pastor, I need to be encouraged. Well, we all need to be encouraged and uh, we all need to hear messages to encourage us in the things uh, of God. Now, we actually are um, uh, we're dealing uh, the last time uh, we on Sunday morning, we we're actually dealing with a series of messages. We dealt with the fathers on Father's Day, and then we we're dealing with uh, the wonderful women of the Bible. And um, we uh, dealt with that on Sunday morning, but then unsaved people in our services the last couple of uh, Sundays, so we we're preaching uh, to the unsaved. And um, so, but we want to go back to that, uh, the wonderful women of the Bible. And as we study about that, that's a wonderful uh, subject and an encouraging uh, subject in the Bible and in uh, the Word of God. Now, one of the women that we did not deal with, and by the way, in the future, I don't know when we'll get around to it, but we want to deal with also Aquila and Priscilla. And uh, as we think of the home and a husband and wife, there aren't a lot of a good sound husbands and wives in the Scripture. Can you name a husband and wife who both love the Lord and serve the Lord? There's not a lot of them in the Scripture when you think about it. And that, that's a great study in the Bible because Aquila and Priscilla are mentioned many, many times in the New Testament. So there's a lot of material we want to get into, and um, uh, I'm sure the rapture will take place before we get into all of uh, all the material that we'd like to get into. But uh, this evening we want to deal with this woman in the Bible, one of the wonderful women in the Bible that we have, ne uh, have not studied about. And when we uh, preached about the wonderful women uh, in the Bible, especially in the Gospels, uh, not in the Old Testament, but the Gospels, the New Testament, there are just so many wonderful women that we read about in uh, the Gospels. And that's a tremendous study uh, in the Word of God. Uh, but one uh, woman that we did not deal with, somebody that we left out, and um, that was Elizabeth. Now, when you study about Elizabeth in the Bible, what you learn about Elizabeth is that she's a neglected woman of the Bible. Now, uh, we just don't hear much about Elizabeth in the Bible. But if you want somebody to encourage you uh, and you want to be encouraged in the Word of God, study about Elizabeth. Now, the reason why I think that she is neglected um, when we come to the Christmas season. Uh, we deal, of course, with Mary and the birth of Christ, and a lot of times we don't say much about Elizabeth. And then the other thing, as we think about Elizabeth, when we uh, think of her, we think of her husband, and how her husband sort of doubted God, and, and so he couldn't talk, and uh, uh, so forth, until John the Baptist was born. And then, of course, she was the mother of John the Baptist. And then a lot of times we emphasize the teaching on uh, John the Baptist. So as a result of it, we find that a lot of times we don't hear much about Elizabeth. But now, as you study the Word of God, she certainly was one of the most godly people that we read about in all of the Bible, the old or uh, the New Testament, and she was a great encourager. Now, in Luke chapter 1 and verses 6 and 7, we see here that, you see, Elizabeth was a super godly woman. In, um, in uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse 6, and they talk about Zacharias 
and Elizabeth. Now, there's another couple in the Bible, Zacharias and Elizabeth. But you don't read about a lot of couples in the Bible that really love the Lord and serve the Lord. It's, it's almost hard to find them. But now, um, in Luke chapter 1 and verse 6, and they were both, that's Elizabeth and Zacharias, righteous before God. Now, that's really something when the Bible says that somebody is righteous before God. I mean, that's an amazing thing that the Bible says, that these people were righteous. Now, righteous here, uh, I believe, is just talking about practical righteousness. Uh, righteousness. They were godly people. And then um, in verse 6, it says, walking. And then you see what it says here uh, in Luke chapter 1, verse 6, in all the commandments of God. See, not some of the commandments of God. But to see, the Bible says all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, and they were blameless. Now, when you think about that in the Word of God, uh, that is uh, really amazing. Imagine somebody, uh, the Word of God saying that somebody now is righteous and uh, before God, and uh, they are uh, walking in all the commandments of God, and they are blameless. Now, see, that shows you how godly Zacharias and Elizabeth were. But now the one we're looking at uh, tonight is Elizabeth, because uh, there's a lot of great uh, teaching about Zacharias, but uh, many times, see, that teaching overshadows Elizabeth, and then we forget about Elizabeth. So uh, tonight, the Lord willing, we want to forget about Zacharias and emphasize um, Elizabeth. And then the Bible says in verse 7 of Luke chapter 1, And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. Now, and uh, that phrase, well stricken in years, now uh, those who have studied, the, uh, studied this out and the language and so forth uh, indicates that they were probably at least 80 years old at this time. See, they're 80 years old. Uh, that's probably what that phrase refers to, somebody about 80 years old. Now, see, the Bible says here they were, say, well um, stricken in years. In other words, they were advanced in years. And again, now in all probability, you'll read about it again in this passage, they're probably about 80 years old. So you're talking about a woman who's 80 years old and she followed the Lord all of her life. So that's an amazing thing when you think about Elizabeth uh, in uh, the Word of God. See, she's an elderly woman, probably about 80 years old, and all during her life, God could say that she was a righteous woman, God could say that she kept all the commandments of God, and that uh, she was blameless. So uh, she was, uh, you talk about the wonderful women of the Bible, you talk about an outstanding uh, person, Elizabeth would be in that category. There are few in the category that Elizabeth would be uh, in. Now, the, uh, uh, the main thing about Elizabeth is that, see, when Mary became pregnant with Jesus, Mary spent the first three months of her, of her pregnancy uh, with Elizabeth. Now, that's really something. Now, you see, God laid it on the heart of Mary after the angel Gabriel came to her and told her to go to her cousin, whose name was Elizabeth. So the first three months of her pregnancy, um, see, Mary was with Elizabeth. So, and all of this indicates in the Bible what a great woman she was, Elizabeth, how she was an outstanding uh, woman of God. Now, we learned something um, about prayer, and I think we can be encouraged in relation to the matter of prayer when we study about uh, uh, Elizabeth. Now, um, in verse 13 of Luke chapter 1, the Bible says, And the angel said unto him, uh, Fear not, Zacharias, 
for thy prayer is heard. And uh, uh, thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name uh, John. So now, uh, see what the Bible say, uh, 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 says here. Uh, fear not, Zacharias, for, say, your prayer, the thing that you have been praying for is now going to be answered. Now, most all the time when uh, people preach about prayer, books are written about prayer, I am uh, greatly grieved because most all of the teaching, preaching, and writing about prayer is totally unscriptural and it is totally unbiblical. And most of the time, it has the same, uh, people have the same attitude, even preachers and teachers about prayer that they had before they were saved. You see, and they just bring all their thoughts about prayer before they were saved over in um, to their Christian experience, and that's all unbiblical. Now, say, here's an interesting thing about prayer, is that, say, uh, Elizabeth and John, or, or uh, uh, Zacharias, who had the baby, John the Baptist, uh, uh, now, you see, they had been praying, and the Bible says that the angel came and told Zacharias that, that the prayer that you have been praying is now answered. Now, how long do you think they were praying? See, she's 80 years old. He's 80 years old at this time. Approximately 80 years old. Could have been older, but she was 80 years old. So now here is a prayer that is answered that they had prayed for for about 60 years. Do you ever hear anybody preach about that? You see, here is a prayer that they prayed. They probably prayed maybe every day for 60 years. See, because, see, uh, Zacharias was a, a priest, and, um, and we find that Elizabeth was a very godly woman. And so, you see, they were looking forward to the coming of the Messiah, and they were praying that they might have a child, they might have a son, and that possibly uh, even the Messiah would come through them. Because now, see, both of these people were very, very godly people, as you study about them, and the background of Elizabeth and the background of uh, uh, Zachariah. So now here is um, a prayer that they prayed for 60 years. Did you ever pray a prayer for 60 years? Uh, most everybody here tonight would say, hey, I'm not 60 years old. What do you mean? But I pray for, but now see, they prayed 60 years that God would give them a son. See, and um, the Bible says in verse 13, and the angel said unto him, fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. Okay, now how long has he been praying? They were married uh, for, what, probably 60 years, 80 years old at this time. Say they're married when they're 20, maybe younger. And uh, so for 60 years, they prayed this prayer. And here's a great truth about prayer in the Bible. And then after 60 years of praying, the prayer is answered. That's an amazing thing about prayer as you study uh, the Word of God. Now, we see an encouraging thing uh, here, and that, um, you see, uh, is uh, God answers prayer. See, now God answered their prayer. Now, it took uh, 60 years for him to answer uh, this prayer, but um, it doesn't mean that God did not hear them. See, God heard their prayer. See, it says, fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. Now, in other words, say, God heard you praying for 60 years, and God now is going to answer uh, uh, your prayer. And so, see, that, that shows that uh, here were godly people. It's not that God did not answer their prayer because there was sin in their lives, or they're outside of the will of God. It's an amazing thing when you study about Elizabeth and Zechariah. See, and they prayed for 60 years, and now God is answering their prayer. What a wonderful thing as we study 
uh, uh, the Word of God. See, and uh, the encouraging thing here is when we pray, remember God hears our prayer. Now, someone might say, I prayed 60 years. So that means that if I prayed for 60 years and God did not hear my prayer, God does not, uh, is not going to answer my prayer. Or we might say, God doesn't hear my prayer. Well, yes, he did. He heard their prayer. But you see, God's timing is not our timing. And you certainly see that here as we study uh, uh, the Word of God. And we see that uh, answered prayer uh, in their life did not mean there was sin in their lives. Didn't mean there was sin in their lives or outside the will of God. Didn't mean that God did not hear them. Did not, uh, does not mean that they were not in the will of God praying that God would give them uh, a, a son. See, nothing uh, like that. And then uh, um, we find here in uh, verse uh, 13, See, the, uh, and the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. Thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name uh, John. Now, now, see, we don't want to get into Zacharias because our emphasis is on Elizabeth, but see, uh, he didn't believe that God could answer the prayer. See, Zacharias basically is saying, I prayed 60 years. God can't give us a, a, a son. And then uh, um, look down in verse 13 or verse 20. And um, the Bible says here um, in verse 20, And behold, thou shalt be dumb. Verse 20 of Luke 1. In other words, see, you, God sent the angel to tell him that God was going to answer the prayer. And see, and, and Zechariah says, oh no. See, God cannot hear my prayer. See, a tremendous lesson here about prayer. See, now he's telling God, God can't answer my prayer. See, uh, we've been praying for 60 years, so uh, how can God answer my prayer? And then the Bible says in verse 20, uh, Behold, thou shalt be dumb, uh, not able to speak, and not, uh, and not able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words. See, and Zacharias, you did not believe that God could answer your prayer. Now, um, after 60 years, we can see why, but it's very interesting uh, what the Bible says. Thou believest not my words. That was the words of the angel Gabriel, which shall be fulfilled. But you see what it says in the last part of verse 20? In their season. You see, God answers prayer in his seasons. Not in your season, not in my season. And many times God does not answer the prayer when and where we want the prayer answered. See, but it's in His season. Now, now we know as we study the Word of God, see, the Savior's coming into the world. And God in the uh, providence of God is bringing the Savior into the world. And John the Baptist was prophesied in the Old Testament, and he's going to be the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, say, all of this had to do with God's timing according to the Word of God. By the way, that's interesting. Say, not only was the birth of Christ foretold in the Old Testament, but the birth of John the Baptist was foretold in the Old Testament, the forerunner that would come uh, before uh, the Lord. So, um, we see that, uh, that Zacharias couldn't believe it. See, I've been praying so long, how can God answer my prayer? See, God cannot answer my prayer. Why? Because I've been praying this same prayer for 60 years. You see, but now the angel says, God's going to answer your prayer. He's going to give you a son. But you see, it's in God's timing. It's in God's season. Now, when we think about uh, Elizabeth in the Word of, uh, of God. See, Elizabeth is a great encourager in the Bible. It could be that she is the greatest example of an encourager in all of the Bible. It's hard to find anybody that was uh, a greater encourager than 
Elizabeth in all of the Scripture. Now, we do read about people in the Bible who encouraged others, but, but now you see, she certainly, Elizabeth, would be at the top of uh, the list. Now, let's read about um, Elizabeth. Now, see, um, Elizabeth is the one that encouraged Mary when Mary needed a lot of encouragement. See, the Virgin Mary needed encouragement. She needed someone to encourage her. Can somebody tell me what the name Mary means? You have a, a note there? Well, a, a lot of uh, Bible students believe that it comes from the Old Testament word and the word Mary actually means, uh, you see, uh, to be uh, discouraged. Uh, the word uh, uh, Mary, you see, uh, means sorrow, that type uh, of a thing. And so, uh, you see, um, some believe that that word Mary means bitter. Remember the Old Testament story of the waters of Mara and the word Mary but uh, there are many that believe that the word Mary means bitter. Now, someone might say, well, how, how do you find that in the Bible? Well, you see, uh, there's a lot of bitterness in the life of Mary. Why? Because she becomes pregnant and she is not married. And then she's going to be there at the cross with the Apostle John to see her son crucified uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, let's read about it in uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse 31. Now, this is Mary. And the Bible says here, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. See, the angel comes to Mary. And now Mary is a teenage girl at this time. And at this time, Mary is not married. You see, it's an amazing story, the birth of Christ. And that's why we're studying it tonight. But uh, that's why we never want to get into the rut of just studying about the birth of Christ on Christmas and the resurrection on Easter. If we get into that rut, we'll never study the Bible, learn the Bible, and know the Word of God. By the way, all that's totally unscriptural, uh, Easter and Christmas, we know that. But now in verse 31 of Luke chapter 1, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name uh, Jesus. And then the Bible says, And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father uh, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and uh, of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, uh, then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, saying, I know not a man? In other words, you're saying, I'm going to have a baby, and I'm not even married. How, how can I have a, a, a baby when I am not married? So now you see what we're getting at? See, Mary needed a lot of encouragement. The angel comes, and by the way, she's a very godly woman. No question about that. But now, see, the angel comes, and she says, I, 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 I'm not even married. How can I have uh, a baby? And so... Um, in verse 33, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and this is the miraculous birth of Jesus Christ, uh, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Uh, therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, and so now the angel is trying to encourage Mary. Mary's a young girl, she's not married, and the angel Gabriel comes to her and says, you're going to have a son, your son is going to be uh, the Messiah, uh, the Savior of the world, and uh, Mary is overwhelmed. Now, how can I have a son when I am not married? So then, as we read on here uh, in the Word of God, you see, in verse 36, and behold, see thy cousin Elizabeth. 
Now, here's where Elizabeth comes in. You see, by the, word, uh, by the way, the word Elizabeth means God is my oath. And uh, it seems to mean that the word Elizabeth is another way of saying that uh, I want to honor the Lord in every area of my life. And certainly that, I think, is indicative of Elizabeth. But now, and behold, thy cousin Elizabeth. So she's related to Elizabeth. And now see what the angel is doing here is he is encouraging Mary. Because Mary says, how can I have a baby when I'm not even married? And uh, behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her, you see what we have here, her old age. She's probably about 80 years old at this time. See, and that's why Zacharias said, there's no way we can have a son. We're too old. And then um, in her old age, and this is the sixth month uh, with uh, her who was called barren. Now, you see, the angel is encouraging Mary through Elizabeth. And she's saying, now, uh, this relative of yours, this cousin Elizabeth, she was a, an old woman, probably 80 years old, and she is pregnant with a child. She is going to give birth. So the angel is uh, encouraging Mary that way. And see, that's why in verse 37, in the context, what it's talking about, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, what that's talking about, many times it's taken out of context, it is talking primarily about Elizabeth. Because Elizabeth is 80 years old, and she's going to have uh, a, a baby. She's already six months uh, uh, pregnant, as uh, the Bible says here. So now, um, as we read the Word of God, see, the Bible says, nothing shall be impossible with God. See, uh, Elizabeth, 80 years old, is going to have a baby. See, God is the God of the uh, impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. Uh, and uh, just like in your situation, see, you think that you cannot have uh, this child, but you see, with God, nothing is impossible. Now, in the context, that's talking about Elizabeth and encouraging Mary in the virgin birth in the fact that she is not uh, married. And then verse uh, 38, and uh, Mary said, Behold, uh, you see, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed uh, from her. Now, uh, we read here in the word of God about how Elizabeth encourages Mary. Now, in verse 39, and Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste. So she uh, was with haste. She was in a hurry into a city of Judah. Verse 40, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted or greeted Elizabeth. And it came to pass, verse 41, when Elizabeth heard the salutation, the greeting of Mary, the babe, that's John the Baptist, leaped in her womb. Now, of course, there's a great pro-life verse, anti-abortion verse in the Bible. See, John the Baptist was a person in the womb, and we certainly uh, see that uh, here in, in the Word of God. And the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. At verse 42, and she spake out with a loud voice, and said, Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, and um, in relation uh, to Mary. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come unto me? Now there you see how excited Elizabeth was. And you see the humility of Elizabeth, that it was an honor and it was a blessing for the mother of our Lord to come to Elizabeth and to visit Elizabeth. Now, and um, verse 44, For lo, as soon as the voice of thy uh, salutation sounded in mine ear, say, and the second time, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. So that's John the Baptist in the womb of Elizabeth, and he's excited because uh, the, the mother of uh, 
our Lord, uh, the Messiah, the Savior, uh, she has come. And then uh, um, the Bible says, and uh, verse 44, And lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ear, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed. And there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from uh, the Lord. See, and so, and she said that uh, what God said, see, she's encouraging Mary. And she says, what God said to you is going to come to pass. In other words, you are going to have uh, this baby. Uh, the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah uh, is going to be born uh, from you. And then, uh, of course, Mary said in verse 46, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Now, see, what you have here in the Word of God is that uh, Mary was the instrument of God in the Word of God, you see, uh, who needed encouragement, and Elizabeth was the one God directed Mary to go to Elizabeth so she could be encouraged at this particular time in her uh, life. Now, uh, obviously, she needed to be encouraged. Now, by the way, uh, look down in verse uh, 56 of chapter 1. And Mary abode with her, that's Elizabeth, for three months. She was with her for three months. Imagine that. Say the first three months of Mary's pregnancy, she was with Elizabeth. Now, and then the Bible says in verse 56, And Mary abode with her about three months, and then returned unto her own house. So what we see here in the Word of God is that uh, God reveals to Mary that she's going to have a son. Now, and uh, Mary's thought was, again, how can I have a son? Because um, my, uh, I'm not even married to anybody. I'm not a married woman. I've never had uh, intimate relations with anybody. So how can I have uh, a, a child? So, say, she needed encouragement, and then the angel encouraged her by saying, go to your cousin, because your cousin Elizabeth is 80 years old, and uh, she is pregnant. That's a miracle of God. With God, nothing can be uh, impossible. And so, now, you're bewildered, you're wondering uh, about this, how can this be, uh, whatever, and so go to Elizabeth, and Elizabeth, she was with Elizabeth for three months, and uh, Elizabeth encouraged her. I believe Elizabeth taught her the Word of God. Now, we know that Mary knew the Word of God, uh, because when she uh, gives, breaks forth in this song, she, in her song, she quotes 15 different verses from the Old Testament. So you see, Mary knew the Word of God, uh, Elizabeth knew the Word of God, uh, but you see, Elizabeth is her elder. She's just a young girl, uh, Mary. Uh, Elizabeth is 80 years old, and she's encouraging her. She, and I'm sure the way she encouraged her was through the Word of God and the things of God and in a spiritual way. Now, the thing here is that Mary needed someone to encourage uh, encourage her. Now, there's a good possibility the word Mary actually means bitter. That's what the word uh, means. Now, so uh, she is now pregnant uh, with uh, the Savior, and she goes back to Nazareth, and she's not married. And people look at her. Now, you see the word Mary could well mean bitter, and they gossiped about her. And they said, here's a girl that was gone for three months, and now she comes back to Nazareth, and she's going to have a baby. She must be an immoral woman. So I'm sure there's a lot of gossip about Mary in the city of Nazareth. And then, um, that was her hometown, and then, of course, you know the, uh, what we refer to 
as the Christmas story. And um, somebody tell me, what was the reaction of Joseph, the man who she was engaged to, what was his reaction to the fact that she is now pregnant, everybody knows she's pregnant, everybody knows she's going to have a baby, and he's engaged to her, and you remember the Christmas story in Matthew chapter 1, what was Joseph going to do? Yeah, uh, to put her away. Yeah, and we read about that in the Word of God. See, in Matthew 1 and verses 18 and 19. So he was going to put her away because he, the one she's engaged to, the one who will become the foster father of the Lord Jesus Christ, says that she must be an immoral woman. You see, so uh, 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 the, the immoral women in the Old Testament were stoned to death. So now he doesn't want to make a big scene of it and just put her away privately. Uh, turn over there to Matthew chapter 1. Now, in uh, Matthew chapter 1, and uh, we read here in verses 18 and 19. And the Bible says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ, um, Matthew 1, 18, was on this wise when his mother Mary was espoused, they engaged to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child, say, of the Holy Ghost. See, and that's, we read about that in Luke chapter 1. And Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Then, of course, the, uh, God revealed to Joseph that this was uh, of the Lord. But now, see, the point we're getting, see, all during her pregnancy... She needed a lot of encouragement, amen? See, Mary needed to be encouraged. Why? Because even the person she was um, engaged to uh, thought that she must have been an immoral woman, and he's ready to put her away uh, privately. So you see, all during her life, she needed encouragement. Mary needed a lot of encouragement. And then, of course, uh, as you turn to Luke chapter 2 and verse 35, and this has to do with uh, Simeon. Now, in Luke chapter 2 and verse 35, the Bible says, And Simeon said to Mary in Luke 2, 35, Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also. Say, they brought the baby Jesus to be dedicated at the temple. And Simeon said, now, remember, see, a sword, it, talking to Mary there, is going to pass through your own soul. In other words, this is uh, uh, going to be a difficult experience being the mother of the Messiah and uh, the Savior. So, you see, all during her life, in the beginning of her pregnancy, during her pregnancy, and even uh, uh, after, see, she needed to be encouraged. She needed encouragement. Now, see, and the beautiful thing we learn in the Word of God, see, that was the ministry of Elizabeth to Mary. See, uh, for three months, she spent time with Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is encouraging her. Say, what was Elizabeth uh, doing? You think they were sitting around playing cards or shuffleboard or something like that? Uh, absolutely not. Say, uh, she was sp uh, uh, sharing spiritual truth with her. Amen? Say, she was building her up spiritually because she needed to be built up spiritually because of what she was going to go through uh, in uh, uh, the future. Now, say, and then, of course, as you read the Word of God, you see, Mary was there at the cross with the Apostle John. And she actually saw the Lord Jesus Christ crucified. She, she was there at the crucifixion. She didn't run away like all the other uh, disciples and apostles outside of John. Uh, they all uh, ran away, but of course uh, she didn't. But now... Uh, 
Uh, see, she was there. She needed a lot of strength. She needed a lot of strength when? After Jesus Christ was crucified. This was her son. This was the one that she gave birth to. So you see, um, she needed encouragement. And I believe we might say that although at this time Elizabeth would have been dead, she would have already died, Elizabeth was there with her at the cross. Now, even though Elizabeth had already died, see, in what sense she encouraged her? I think that uh, uh, Elizabeth got her into the Word of God, got her into the fact that Jesus Christ would actually uh, be crucified according to Old Testament uh, Scripture. And so in that sense, Elizabeth was with Mary at the cross, although she'd already died. But in the sense that the encouragement that she gave her was even carried on at the cross because she spent those first three months of her pregnancy with uh, uh, Mary. So there's a lot of great truth here in uh, uh, the Word of God. And you see here an encourager. Somebody who encouraged somebody that needed encouragement. Now, who was the one that needed encouragement? The Virgin Mary. She needed encouragement. See, she, people would gossip about her. Again, the person she was engaged to uh, would not understand her. And nobody would understand what she was going through. But she spent the first three months of her pregnancy with Elizabeth. Elizabeth encouraged her. Elizabeth built her up in the things of God. So there's a great lesson here in relation to the matter of encouragement. Amen? Say, all of us ought to be like Elizabeth. We ought to be in the business of encouraging others in the things of God encouraging others spiritually, encouraging others to live for God and to serve God and uh, so forth. See, that's the great, wonderful thing we learn here about Elizabeth. See, now, and as we study about Elizabeth in the Bible, again, she is another one of the many wonderful women in the Bible. And certainly she was a wonderful uh, woman. Now, we'll not get into it tonight because it's something else that we want to deal with uh, at another time. But we learn a great lesson here in uh, the Word of God. Elizabeth was 80 years old. The greatest time in her life was the time when she was 80 years old. The greatest years of the life of Elizabeth, you see, was when, you might say, she was retired. Now, you see, a great truth here in the Word of God. See, now a lot of times we talk about young people uh, serving the Lord, young people doing the will of God, and uh, so forth, and that's wonderful, but here in the Bible, you learn about a retired woman who was serving the Lord, and a retired woman that was doing the will of God. You see, uh, it's very interesting to study what the Bible says about retirement. Did you ever hear a sermon on retirement in the Bible? What the Bible says about uh, retirement? It's a very interesting study, and I'd encourage people, study the Bible about what the Bible says about retirement, you see. And uh, that's a very interesting subject because obviously the Bible teaches nobody ought to ever retire from serving the Lord, amen? Amen. No matter how old they are, they should not uh, retire from serving the Lord. Now, another interesting subject in the Bible 
is to study about recreation in the Bible. What does the Bible say about recreation? Say, I want to retire so I have a good time and devote my life to recreation. What does the Bible say about recreation? Can you think of some verses in the Bible about recreation? Now, another thing that's interesting to study as you study your Bible is uh, what does the Bible say about entertainment? Now, all of those are good subjects to study in the Bible. Just think about it. When you learn and you study about entertainment in the Bible, say, think about it. You say, uh, what does the Bible say about entertainment? What's the Bible say about retirement? What's the Bible say about recreation? It's very interesting as we study the Bible and um, in relation uh, to these things. You see, because, see, here is a woman and a man who's 80 years old, and they're still serving God, they're still doing the will of God, and the greatest years of their life was in their retirement. In other words, you see, the greatest years of their service to the Lord and the fulfillment of their answered prayers was as retired individuals. That's an amazing thing as we study the Bible. And uh, actually, we just got into it. There's a lot more we'd uh, like to get into as we study the Word of God. Let me just give this illustration. I uh, had a, w a wedding of one of the grandkids uh, recently, and uh, there were some folks there at the wedding. And uh, they were good Christian people. And uh, I was talking to them, and they retired, and they have money, and they are able to sustain themselves. And we got talking, and um, they have good health, they able to sustain themselves. And we got talking to them, and they said that we just moved into one of the worst crime cities in the United States. And I said, what do you mean? And they said, uh, they lived in Florida, and then they moved into, into the city that is one of the worst crime cities in the United States of America. And they said that, now these are retired people, and they said, we moved there to try to win some of those young people to Jesus Christ. And so, and they're lay people. They're not preachers or anything like that. And so they said, we have a Bible study, and uh, it's right in the middle of uh, a really bad city in a bad section. And uh, they say they're reaching out to some of those teenagers in that city. You see, and they said some of them are coming to the house, and we have Bible study with them. But they said our whole purpose is to devote the rest of our lives to try to reach some of those young people in that crime-ridden city, you see, uh, as long as God would give us the time and opportunity and health to do it. And they said possibly even by the grace of God to get a church started. Now, they are lay people. See, they're not preachers or anything like that. How many times have you heard of somebody saying, I want to retire and go live in the ghetto to try to win people to Jesus Christ. Did you ever hear anybody say that? Now, you see what I'm saying? Say, God wants us to serve Him in our retirement age. Say, uh, He doesn't want us to retire from serving the Lord. He wants us to be involved in serving the Lord, even in our old age. And I did ask him, I said, well, have you had any difficulty there? And um, they said, not really. They said, we've had a few skirmishes. And by the way, um, they, they live there, and they said, we had a few skirmishes. I think they said that uh, we may have had the car stolen one time and uh, that type of a thing. 
But you see, these were retired people who loved the Lord and had the joy of the Lord in their hearts because they were serving the Lord in their retirement age. And you see, they didn't just retire to have recreation and entertainment. They retired to reach people for Jesus Christ. You see, now that, you see, Elizabeth and Zacharias, they were 80 years old, but they were serving the Lord and the best years of their life were the last years of their life. See, a lot of times we talk about young people serving the Lord. How about older people serving the Lord? How about people who are retired and have an income and, and have their health? See, they ought to be serving God full time. You see, and so there's a great lesson here in the, uh, the Word of God. But you see, we need to be encouragers. We need to encourage people. And Mary, of course, is a great, uh, needed the encouragement. All during her life, she needed encouragement. And I believe all during her life, she went back to those three months that she spent with Elizabeth. And they were the life-changing uh, years of her life to encourage her uh, to be what God wanted her to be. And in all probability, Mary could have never went through what she went through. You see, unless there was an Elizabeth in her life for the first three months of her life. Well, it's a challenging message in the Word of God. Amen? And you see, that's the way the book of Luke begins. It's a blessing. And we just uh, scratched the surface. I'm sure there are some other seed thoughts in your life that you can bring about and think about in relation to this great, wonderful woman of the Bible by the name of Elizabeth. Our Father, we pray that you might encourage us, build us up in the things of God, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.